Hi everyone and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today we're going to be uh, looking at part of the lab survival series and I'm going to be talking about the subtle art of pipetting. Uh, you understand the basics of pipetting already if you've ever used, you guessed it, a straw. Basically the idea is very simple. You create a pressure gradient and it pulls or pushes volume through the straw. Now, don't get me wrong, we are not going to be using straws in any kind of science lab. We will not be pipetting by mouth. But actually, just so you know, that was done back in the day. We're talking a long time ago. And as you might imagine, uh, some very unpleasant things happen as a result of mouth pipetting. Today we use a variety of tools to uh, cause the suction uh, that forces the fluids to move. Uh, we use roller pumps and little squeezy balls. I'm going to show you the roller pumps here in a little second. And then attached to these pumps, uh, we have glass or plastic pipettes. And they're going to be marked incrementally so that you can measure volumes uh, with fairly good accuracy. This is a pretty typical one. This is a 10 ml pipette. And as you can see, this is going to tell you what the maximum volume is that you can dispense. And it tells you what the increments are. And this means total delivered volume, and it is calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius. So each numbered increment, so between, for example, the 4 and the 3, this is 1 ml. And then each line increment, these little lines, that's a tenth of a milliliter. So you really have to read these so that you understand exactly what you're pipetting and you know what uh, lines you're shooting for. Um, one other example, this is a 1 ml pipette. Each numbered increment is a tenth of a milliliter, so between the four and the three here, this is one-tenth of a milliliter, and each little line now represents one-hundredth of a milliliter. So as I said, you need to pay attention and read uh, what's printed on the pipette so that you know exactly what you're getting. Um, when you actually use it, you want to make sure that you measure from the bottom of the meniscus. Right, so here's your little meniscus, and the volume is going to be read from the base of this. So this would be 2.5 mLs. So pipetting can take a little bit of practice, but you want to make sure that you insert the pipette vertically into your sample and use a very smooth motion with your pump to draw your fluid up the pipette. And wherever you uh, have the bottom of the meniscus, that's, that's going to be the correct volume as you look into the uh, pipette there. Now you can move it anywhere you like and when you're ready to dispense you simply move the pump either with your thumb like this or just go ahead and depress the plunger and eject your sample. So isn't that exciting? What about really small volumes though? Um, in physiology as well as a lot of other fields we require very small volumes to be transferred with fairly high accuracy. The units that we use are often in microliters and microliters uh, are one millionth of a liter so 1,000 microliters is equivalent to one milliliter and what we're going to use for that we have a variety of tools we have fixed volume pipetters and in most of your classes you will use these at some time or another um, but the magic is really the adjustable volume pipetters and specifically one that looks something like this I know it is extremely magical um, these are your new best friends uh, the pipette men as it's sometimes called uh, there's a variety of companies that make them and all the different tips uh, depending upon the size of the micro pipetter that you're using these are the parts of the uh, beast uh, this is actually a fairly expensive piece of equipment, so please uh, take some time and practice with it. I always have my students practice with water um, until they get the feel of it, because it, it, is, it is sort of an acquired skill. Um, but you can see the different parts and how you hold it in your hand. Um, and at the very bottom, we have a, the disposable tip. That's this part down here, and this is the only part that will actually come in contact with your sample. Um, it really is a fairly sophisticated mechanism for doing the same thing as a straw. Uh, we've come a long way from the straw, but basically what you're doing is 
um, displacing air, which moves liquid, very much like a straw, but of course with a very high degree of accuracy. The hardest part of using a micropipetter is really knowing which pipetter to use and what the volume is that you're going to dial in. So there are a variety of tools, um, a variety of models rather, um, that will help you to dispense the volumes that you want, but you got to pay attention to what you're using and how you dial them in. So this gives you the adjustable range of each of the models, the recommended range. In other words, this is the, the column that shows with high accuracy what you can actually pipette. And then the smallest increment here that you can actually adjust to. Now I know this is confusing, but you might want to spend some time looking at this and pressing pause so that you understand what this actually means. You're going to see a little window with three numbers in it. And the different models of micropipetters will be dispensing different volumes depending upon what shows up in the window. So for example, if you're using a P10 and you dial in 075, what you actually get is 7.5 microliters. If you dial in the same numbers, 075 on a P100, you get 75 microliters. So I, I really do encourage you to spend a lot of time, um, I give my students a, a little handout on what the different models are and what the dispensed volumes will be. Uh, it does take a while. Eventually you're going to get to a point where you don't even think about it, but in the beginning this can be really confusing if you're uh, doing an experiment or a lab which requires you to use multiple models all at one time. To use the micropipetter, first of all you've got to pick the right one, you've got to dial in the correct volume, and then you've got to firmly place your tip on the end of the pipetter. Then you're going to plus the you're going to press the plunger down, that's a tongue twister there, to the first stop and then you're going to hold it vertically and immerse it a couple millimeters into your fluid. Don't go all the way to the bottom. You're going to slowly release the plunger. Do not allow it to snap. So you want to do it in a controlled fashion. Snapping will change the volume that you're actually going to get. It will reduce your accuracy dramatically. Then you're going to withdraw the tip. You're going to place the tip against the wall of the receiving container and you're going to depress the plunger down. You're going to feel a stop. Keep going. You're going to feel some resistance and that's going to actually push any little droplets that might be there out of the tip and uh, with the plunger depressed go ahead and remove it from the tube and then dispose of it um, by pushing the ejector button and here's a little video of that. So here I've got my P1000 micropipetter and um, now I'm going to make sure that the volume is set to what I want so I'm going to dial in my desired volume and you can see here that this is going to dispense a volume of 350 microliters as I've set it right now. Next you're going to get yourself a tip. Make sure you're using the right tip for your micropipetter. I'm going to depress the plunger and then I'm going to take my sample and I'm slowly release the plunger and that's going to pull up my 350 microliters. Next, I'm going to take the tube uh, that I'm going to be dispensing into. I'm going to press, I'm going to insert the tip. I'm going to press down all the way to the first stop and then to the second stop. That's going to give a little bit more of a push. You can see the bubbles there to release any extra droplet. And there you have it. As always, I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please visit us on the Facebook page and follow on Twitter. Good luck.